Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the latest in our series of Doha debates sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. In 1945, seven states got together to form the Arab League with the aim of ensuring better conditions for all of them and better coordination among their governments. Today there are 22 states in the League, hailed by some as a glorious vehicle for projecting Arab influence and condemned by others for being ineffectual, outdated and a failure in all its objectives. Our motion tonight is this House believes it is time for the Arab League to disband. And where better to debate that than here in one of its member states, Qatar? Speaking for the motion, Shafi Gabra, who is founding president of the American University of Kuwait and a longtime advocate of democratic reform in the region. And with him, Chibli Malat, a recent Lebanese presidential candidate and human rights campaigner. He was a leading opponent of extending the term of the Lebanese president, Emil Lahoud. Against the motion, not surprisingly, is Hesham Youssef, who is Chief of Cabinet of the Arab League's current Secretary General, Amar Moussa. He formerly held the post of official spokesperson for the League. And with him is Azmi Bishara, an Arab-Israeli politician, a member of the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, and the first Arab-Israeli to run for election as Prime Minister of the country. So clearly he's never mind taking on impossible causes. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. And now let me call first on Shafiq Gabra to speak for the motion. Maybe if I was asked this question a year or two ago, I wouldn't have uh, made the point that the Arab League has become very much irrelevant. Um, it has been diminished. It has undermined reform. When the issue of reform was suggested in the Arab world, the Arab League, in a way, just absorbed it and did nothing about it. The Arab League has not been able to do anything in Iraq, neither to help, to stop, whether during sanctions or during the war or after the war. The Arab League has not been able to help after the assassination of Hariri, has not been able to do anything in Drafur with all the international images of human rights abuses in the Sudan. The Arab League has not been able to help us in a transitional stage, in a very complicated stage that the Arab world is going through now. Democracy, human rights, development, education, all the basic issues and ingredients that can make a better Arab world have not been dealt with, have not been touched, but on the contrary, have been frozen through the Arab League. And in many ways, it has become an expression of Arab weakness. It has become an expression of an Arab status quo that is increasingly problematic for all of us. The Arab League was supposed to represent us, to represent all of us in its ability to speak for us. We don't feel it, we don't see it, and it is in that context that I feel something dramatic has to happen, and it's in that context that I believe whether it stays or it goes, we won't feel that. Shafiq Gabra, thank you very much. You want to disband the Arab League at a time when Arabs need more coordination, more integration than ever, at a time of multiple crises? You want to take away the one organization that speaks for them? Why? In, in many ways, that organization has become part of the problem. I will call for alternatives. Why the organization is the problem? Why, not, why, not, why not the members who make it up? Other members and other organizations in the Arab world could make a better approach to dealing with issues. Like which? Gulf which, Cooperation which for Council, instance? for instance. The Gulf Cooperation Council of the GCC has been more effective in dealing with the issues related to the Arab Why? Gulf. Why? What's it GCC. achieved? What's it achieved? Economics, in the Arab politics, hasn't? travel, what? Development, what? 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 development. What? Those are just words. What? What has it achieved? Look Give me at a concrete agreement that it's reached. I came from Kuwait. Did you do anything came, in Iraq, I which you mentioned? I came, no. I came from Kuwait to Qatar on a civil ID. I did not have to go through any of the complications or the bureaucracies that are naturally used in relation between Arab states. Who prevented Iraq from attacking Kuwait in 1960? The Arab League. Exactly. That was exactly. the height. Big achievement. That was the height. However, 1967 was a turning point. 1967 was the beginning of the diminishing and the beginning of retreat for the Arab League. And it is now time to look for alternative organizations. And maybe through this program, we can Why think of alternative. Why not alternative politicians to make up the Arab League? It's therefore, it's only as good as the people you put That's into it. That's a very long uh, process. What we need is a dramatic situation right now 
that can bring about an awakening about possibilities. Thank you. Thank you. Now let me call, please, on Hashem Yusuf to speak against the motion. I look at the Arab world, I see there is a problem. Absolutely. I think we will all agree. But if I were to look for a solution, as far as I'm concerned, the solution is reform. Whether it's political, economic, social, societal, you name it. This is the solution. Not to disband the Arab League. That's the easy route. Secondly, the whole world is going through a process of regionalism. Every single country in the world is trying to join a region in order to cater for its interests. Now we in the Arab world have a mechanism and we want to disband it because we have problems. Absolutely we have problems. But we should be looking on how we can solve these problems rather than taking the easy route and saying, well, disband it. The report of the UNDP that criticized the Arab world was launched from the Arab, Arab League. Why? Because we believe that to be critical is fine, but you have to be objective. There are things that we objected to in the report. We didn't agree with all the elements of the report, but we felt that we should be doing this criticism from the Arab League and try to see what can be done. It's easy to attack organizations. Every single organization in the world has been criticized, whether it's the UN, the African Union, you name it. But I feel that this is the time that we should be protecting and advancing our interests through the Arab League. There are problems in the Arab world that cannot be solved unilaterally by any single country, however big it is. Let me give you some examples. The image of the Arabs abroad, it's a big problem. I don't think that any country in the Arab world, whether it's Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, you name it, I don't think that any of these countries can solve this issue on its own. We have to do this collectively. Issues like terrorism, issues like environment, and so on. So this is why we need the Arab League, and this is why I think that this motion is misplaced. Hashem Yusuf, thank you very much indeed. It's a dismal record, though, isn't it? Even if you want to keep the organization. Dismal record. You set out in your charter to serve the common good of Arab countries, to ensure better conditions for all Arabs, to fulfill the hopes and expectations of all Arab countries. And yet in the UN report that you cited, in 2005, when it was released, it said, liberty is curtailed and oppression is the norm in the Arab world. That's not much of an achievement for the Arab League, is it? Absolutely. Does this That's mean, dismal, isn't that, it? That, does this mean that we should surrender and say, well... It means you failed. Well, of course we had many failures, but we had many successes as well. To set against that, where your people live in an atmosphere where liberty is curtailed and oppression is the norm. Oppression is the norm. No, oppression, I don't think that oppression is the norm. So you disagree with the report that you cited yes, a moment course. ago? Yes, of course. I said there are elements in the report that we disagree with. The issue is not that oppression is, is the norm or not. The issue is much more it fundamental. Is, it is, because you are committed to getting rid of oppression. Yes, of course, we are committed to that. But this does not mean that it is easy. The process of democratization in the whole world has not been an easy process. You don't want to be judged on results then? No, no. You want to be judged I, no, on no, intentions? No, 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 not in on intentions, on results. But what I'm saying is... But that's that, the result. Oppression is hold the Hold on, Tim. Hold on. What I'm saying is the process of democratization was not an easy process. Whether it was in the United States, whether in the UK, whether in France that started violently, whether in Germany that had several setbacks throughout the process of democratization, it is not an easy process. But you can't argue that you don't have a healthy debate in the Arab world on all kinds of issues. You name it. Whether a it's healthy debate with oppression at the end of it. No, Still not great. No. With Still not great. With, with change at the end of I'm it. I'm sure you're going to get some questions with about that With change at the end, of course. With change at the end of it. All right. Hashem Yusuf, thank you very much indeed. Let me now call on Chibli Malat, please, to speak for the motion. Well... Not only is it inefficient, it's also, I think, it has become counterproductive. It has become counterproductive because we need other vehicles for change in the region, and the Arab League stands in the way of those changes. And Hisham, uh, it is not the easy route. On the contrary, status quo is the easy route. 
what you are suggesting, not to face the problem that the Arab League has become so counterproductive that we have to look at it radically as a way uh, that stands uh, between us and the reform that we are seeking and standing between us and the reform we are seeking because none of the Arab countries is a democratic country. And so far as the system is being supporting itself uh, and the example that we have seen in the self-perpetuation of the system was most glaring in the latest Arab summit when the head of the hosting country, Sudan, did not utter a single word with regard to the most tragic development that the planet is seeing nowadays, which is the situation in Darfur. So not only is it counterproductive, I think that what we have seen in the descent to tragedy with the continuation of the Arab League as it is, an inefficient and counterproductive vehicle for us Arabs is the fact that the Arab League has become, unfortunately, a sham. But the only thing tangible that you have seen in the Sudan summit, the only effective dimension that you have seen, is the reconduction of the mandate of the current secretary, the boss of Mr. Youssef, into the Arab League, an exact reproduction of all the other Arab countries whose main problem is the fact that the person who sits at the helm does not change. So inefficient, counterproductive, sham, and alas, corrupt. And to the issue of, uh, of what we do with it, I'm afraid the problem is that it is so structurally inept, the Arab League today, that it cannot be reformed. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Where are all these other vehicles that you suggest are waiting in the wings to take over from the Arab League? It's civil society. We are fighting. As, what, as, what does that as mean Arabs. in concrete terms? Well, Organizations that could better represent the Arab world than the Arab League? Which absolutely. Ones? Which Anything ones? that is not statal, that is outside the well, organization. Give me an example. Well, I'll give you an example of what we have been doing as groups in the Arab world that come together in various places as civil society. But these are disparate groups. groups. They come together they on are a single issue. We don't have any other dimension because the states are against us. Here we is an organization that tries to set, set standards, tries to set principles mm -hmm. at a time of chaos, at a time of violence, at a time of desperation for certain people, and you want to junk the one organization that can do that, Arab-wide? Well, if the principle is to stand for the atrocities for Darfur, yes, I want to junk it. It keeps alive the vision of a better future, though, doesn't it? This is, this is a dream in the Arab world. It articulates the dream, and it works with very... You can argue about whether it's successful, I don't but think it works towards us, it. I don't think any one of us here uh, would agree with you, Tim, that the Arab League is the dream. We, as Arabs, are looking for a dream. It's certainly not the Arab League. Kibli Mala, thank you very much indeed. Now let me call, please, on Azmi Bishara to speak against the motion. The issue here is, has to do, I think, much more deeper with Arab identity, and this is what is of concern for me, and this is what worries me in this kind of thinking, whether in this motion or other places. You hear now about Iraq, you hear Kurds, Shiites, and Sunnites. You don't even hear the word Arabs. I think there is an effort, which is... Uh, uh, I stand against it here, which is an effort to de-Arabize. Everything that has to do with Arab or Arab identity should be disbanded, dismantled, as if it is the problem. Now, Arabs have the right to have Arab organizations. Now, the main Arab organization is the Arab League. It's of states now. If you want to reform it, the place is not to disband the Arab League, but to change the regime in Egypt to change the regime in Syria, to change the regime in Lebanon, to change the regime in Jordan. What do you have with the Arab League? The Arab League represents states. It is not an NGO. It is not a civil society organization. It is an interstate organization. Because this nation was deprived from its ability to have one nation state, like any nation in the world, the Arabs are divided in so many states and societies and the compromise that they found, which is a very weak compromise, a uh, very poor compromise, is to have this organization of Arab states. Now, this is all what remains from this yearning for an Arab state or Arab unity, etc. Now, this is neither an Arab state nor dividing the Arab uh, country in, in sects, etc. This is a kind of compromise that I think it has to be kept because I think this effort has no end. 
The Arab League has nothing to do with Darfur, and it's not the worst place in the earth. I think it's a very bad place, Darfur. I think the worst place in the, in the earth now in which atrocities are being held every day is Iraq, where Arab identity is disbanded, and the Americans are the vehicle there, not the Arab League. Azmi Bishara, thank you very much indeed. Let me just say that I'm going to come to the audience shortly for your questions, so please have them ready in a moment. Azmi Bishara, why this sentimental attachment to an organization that has so manifestly failed to protect the rights of Arabs within the Arab region? Well, first of all, I think uh, affiliations in general are sentimental, so no problem with, <laughs> with sentiments. Well, let me put it another way. Why an attachment to a tool that doesn't do what it says on the box that it's supposed to do? Why not well, take it back? Well, first of all, it's keeping a, a weak, but it's keeping a connection between Arab states that they sit even at times of crisis, even at the time of Iraq. There was a place they where sit? they sit. Half the members didn't turn up for well, the last okay, summit, but so, still so it's disbanding yeah, itself, but isn't it? Well, no. I think it's... There Nine out of 22 uh, no, didn't no. go I think there no. are some Arab regimes who want to keep stronger relationships with the United States and even with Israel than with other Arab regimes who want it to be disbanded. This is another reason why I don't want it to be disbanded. Because disbanding it means giving legitimacy for having stronger relationships with Israel or with American or etc. than with other other Arab regimes, and I think some Arab regimes wouldn't like it. It's embarrassing for them, and I want them to be embarrassed. Yes. Isn't, isn't the reason that the problems in your region are so intractable because you hang on to the same mechanisms decade after decade which have proved that they don't work? Simply for, simply for the Tim, reasons that Tim, you've just outlined. Tim, interstate organizations, multinational organizations, in this case it's not multinational, is one of the tools, yes. The problem is the political regimes, the political culture in this country, not the fact that you have an organization. I can give you examples in, in cases where the UN was counterproductive, corrupt, bad, etc. Nobody said disbanding the UN. Now, this is the UN. Here in this case, you have, it's, it's the only organization which connects all the Arabs as Arabs. Azmi Bashara, thank you very much indeed. Now, let me take some questions from the floor. There's a lady in the Tim, third row. Tim, Tim, before you go to the floor, something that, no, I have to, there are some elements that I have to respond to. Mr. Shibley said that the Arab League is corrupt. I don't think that accusations of that kind should be leveled without proof. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a very serious accusation. You know, we can talk do about... Answer, do you want to answer that? We can, we can, no, no, we can, talk, UN, we can talk about political we, problems... All right, well, let, him, let him answer the specific point that you've Absolutely. raised. I think it's extraordinarily corrupt that someone who is being accused of, uh, of genocide in his own country stands... Uh, and uses a system which is called the Arab League to put himself forward as a gatherer of Arabs. I think this is the ultimate corruption. The corruption is for someone uh, like Mr. Mubarak, who's third in line after two other pharaohs in, um, in, um, in staying in power for so long, well, to remain think, in power are, are for here so to long. Attack, so are we well. here to attack leaders and presidents? Is this why we're here? Well, you're here to discuss. Yes, we're here to you're discuss. Free, you're free to make the point you want, and he's free Absolutely. to make the point you want. Well, he stands okay. also in the UN. Nobody's calling and for disbanding the UN. I mean, Mubarak can stand in the UN everywhere else. All right. And then Sharon, then. the biggest criminal, is in the UN and very, he's promoted very, very everywhere. Very briefly. I don't think this is it's, it's an internal question. Leaders should be changed, not in interstate organizations, but in their own countries. All right, Dr. Gabriel, the place. very, brief. the Arab very the briefly, place. there are a lot of questions uh, in the uh, audience, and I want to go uh, to them. Very briefly, the Arab League, uh, on, on, on two issues. One of the problems of the Arab League, that it is based on membership that you only speak Arabic, and you have to be an independent Arab country. This was the colonial era that put us together in the Arab League. The reality is, membership should be based on style of governance, what you do inside your country, economic development, basic ingredients All that right. relate to... Please, gentlemen, Tim, lady, lady in the third row, please let us have your question. Um, this is directed at the speakers for the motion. Um, I'm going to start with the classic saying, um, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. So we should consider the Arabic countries as lemons, and the Arab League is lemonade. So why do we fall down to learn to pick ourselves up? So why do we have to abandon something that we've been working so long and hard for? We have the potential as Arab countries, and we should prove the public eye wrong. What do you think about that? Jibli Malat. Well, I agree with you. The problem is the vehicle. 
I think that when I say it's counterproductive, it's that there are so many talents in the Arab world and we're being let down all the time by this Arab League. We've tried time and again to reform it. I've been myself to the Arab League on one occasion uh, in Cairo where we were supposed to debate reform and that was the time when Saadeddin Ibrahim was in prison. So it gives you an idea of the extraordinary uh, amount of, uh, of uh, the gap that there is between the lemons and the lemonade. And to the extent that the lemonade does not correspond at all to what we deserve, uh, I think it's better to avoid it and try to find out something else. Let, let me bring Hesham Yusuf in here. Now, to argue that countries are not reforming or they are not changing because of the presence of the Arab, Arab League is ludicrous. You know, why isn't any country changing its educational system or its healthcare system or its transportation system or advancing its process of democratization? Is because the Arab League in Cairo preventing it from doing so? So the Arab League is preventing the countries that are eager for reform but, but the Arab League is preventing them from doing so? I think this is unbelievable. You can't make an argu uh, argument of that nature and, and get away with it. You know, reform is important. And we have to advance in reform, whether it's political, economic, or social, you name it. But you can't blame the Arab League for governments not reforming. All right, Chibli if, there is, if there is a problem of political will in dealing with many of these issues, not only in the Arab world, but also at the international level, then you have to find out what the problem is, is and how to resolve it. Okay, let, 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 let him, let him come say, back. Well, now. it's the Arab League that, yeah. that's well, look, the problem. Let, let him come back. Uh, on. Look, I think that there is a profound difference, in my view, with yours and, uh, and Azmi's. And I'll give you two simple examples. We have sent a motion. 71 MPs out of 128 Lebanese MPs sent a motion to the Arab League at the last summit to say our current president is illegitimate. What has the Arab League done with it? Zero. This is not it true. has embraced. It's not it true. has embraced an it illegitimate president. Okay. So it's standing in this front did of not happen. Point. This did not happen. All right. Happen. I'm, I'm going to move on to a gentleman in the front row. My question is to Shafiq. Uh, you talked about that there is a problem in the Arab League, and you didn't bring, and you just you want to disband it. While you didn't bring anything to replace that, and. Uh, you know that uh, the spending bad organization and not replacing it will cause a bigger problem. Don't you believe that bad leadership is better than nothing? Well, you see, um, if you uh, see reforming the Arab League is problematic. In 2004, there was this talk about reforming the Arab League and having a common market and uh, the vote will be different. Nothing happened. Six years, in fact. Nothing happened in the reform of the Arab League. It's like reforming the regime of Hilal Selassie of Ethiopia during the times of Hilal Selassie. It will not get us anywhere. It is not doing anything in the tribal sectarian war in Iraq. It is not doing anything in what is going on in Palestine. It is not doing anything anywhere. And therefore, disbanding, it means to me, like exactly disbanding a Ministry of Information somewhere in Qatar, or in the Arab world, distribute the organizations that are linked to the Arab League, to the variety of Arab states, L let those states, and some of them, take responsibility. Qatar let has the structure. Qatar has this, disbanded. Yes, its disbanded this Ministry of Information. You can do the same to the Arab League, and still, I mean, you have, you have 12 organizations under the Arab League. None of them is doing anything serious, they are all under budget. They don't even have the salaries to pay at the end of the month. None of the Arab states are paying for them. Find a way Should to bring those organizations. There is yourself. an organization for women. What does it do for women? There is an organization for trade. What does it do for trade? Let him come back on your point. Hesham Yusuf. You see, it is very unfortunate. You are speaking about something without knowing the basic information of most of these things that you're talking about. You see, I'm not saying that the Arab League is the best institution in the world, far from it. And I know many of the difficulties facing the Arab League more than you can imagine. But I can tell you a lot of success stories about what, have been what has been done by many of these organizations, whether it's an organization for development of agriculture or industrial development or to advance tourism or trade. I have seen tens of business people 
who have told me that as a result of the free trade area in the Arab world, that they have been able to live and that their businesses have been flourishing. Many investments, inter-Arab investments, tourism in the Arab world. You know, there are many success stories in relation to some of these issues. It is, some of them are not known to some of you because because of the bad publicity. All right, okay, we're then, gonna move on. We're gonna take a question from a lady at the back, please. Um, I have a question for uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Shibli. Um, I would like to ask if you, you're criticizing the Arab League when um, that it hasn't done anything to Lebanon, when the people in Lebanon itself are not, have not been able to unite. There are so many sectors in Lebanon itself and they have not been able to unite to come up with one decision. So how do you expect the Arab League as a whole to come and solve this problem. Thank you. Uh, look, I think that there is no doubt, there is no doubt that um, the responsibility for each people is their own responsibility first and foremost. In other words, uh, the motion tonight with us is not about what to do with the sectarian system in Lebanon, which I agree is a big problem. And I'm not saying that the problem, uh, that the motion tonight of disbanding the Arab League is, has to do with the issue of Lebanon. What I know is that every time there is something related to Lebanon, the Arab League goes in the wrong direction. And I'll give, because uh, Lebanon could be the, uh, an emotional dimension, personal uh, dimension, but let me get back to Azmi on the issue of Iraq. Back in 2003, a group of Arab individuals, citizens, got together and said, look, we're going to have the Americans occupy Iraq. Let's do something about it let us put pressure so that Mr. Saddam Hussein leaves power. Do you think it went anywhere with the Arab League? It went nowhere with the Arab League. It was the responsibility of the Arab League to prevent the war in 2003, and there was, there was a movement from 50 individuals in the Arab world, proud Arabs, who said, Mr. Hussein is bringing us a catastrophe. He should go home. Okay, the Azmi Bashar is, wants to answer that. Let him come in. Well, I mean, because Shibli directed to me, I, I, I think it is a kind of, uh, I mean, either the Arab League changes Saddam Hussein and the United States should come in. It's neither the job of both. Well, well it, they could not convince Saddam Hussein. Okay, bad for Saddam Hussein. But it doesn't mean that the Arab League should be disbanded because it could not convince Saddam Hussein to leave power. I think, you want, I think the UN won't be able to, to convince George Bush to leave power. I'm sure of that. This doesn't make that the UN should be disbanded. You know, and I think that George Bush should leave power, yeah, as early as possible, yeah. And I don't think that the UN can convince him to do that. I, it is, it's not an argument. I think, yes, well, Saddam the... Hussein should have gone earlier, yes, this is true. And the Arab League could not succeed, it's true. This means that the Arab League should be empowered, not disbanded. It should be empowered. You should give the Arab League more strength, All not right. disband the Arab okay. League. Okay, okay. Very, very briefly. Very briefly. Please. One on Lebanon and one on Iraq. One on Lebanon in relation to stability on Lebanon. Stability in Lebanon now is as a result of a deal brokered in El Taif by the Arab League. This is one point. The second point is in relation to Iraq. The situation in Iraq, it's not only the Arab world that wanted to avoid war. It's the Arab world, France, Germany, the, uh, Russia. We all tried to avoid the war. We all failed. So don't, why are you blaming the Arab League only for, for failing that? This okay, okay. We're going to move to a question. Lady in the, the third row. My question is for the panel against the motion. Uh, why do you defend the Arab League when every time our leaders gather to solve our problems, they agree to disagree? Um, don't you think that it's time that we as Arabs start looking towards forming a more effective United Arab Union? Azmi Bashar. Well, I, I mean, this is generalization. Arabs agree to disagree. Arabs do not leave an opportunity to miss an opportunity. These are generalizations. But she doesn't feel served by the Arab League. Well, okay. Effectively. I don't, I, I'm not served at all by the Arab League. I don't feel served. I'm not served. The Arab League does not um, serve me. It does not serve you. Still, we can discuss things. I mean, we don't only discuss things that serve us. It doesn't serve me at all. I don't expect anything from yeah, the Arab League. Uh, I am just suspicious about people who want to disband the Arab League. You, you like they want to disband Arabs in general. Let her, let her come back. Uh, be, because their meetings are, are actually, uh, we see them on TV, and we see them argue, and sometimes cause you know, scenes, I, I, I uh, embarrassing will think, excuse scenes. Excuse me, let, let her finish, please. Oh, so uh, we see them on TV, uh, 
arguing and not, not agreeing on anything and sometimes causing scenes, em actually embarrassing scenes. So um, I think that it's, it's time that we start forming uh, a more effective union. Oh. Other than the Arab League, because it's okay. not working. Well, I, you know, you know, okay. Some Arabs are embarrassed by the fact that they are Arabs. Uh, they were in the world. I'm not. No, no, I'm not one of them. <laughs> and I, I like seeing Arabs not agreeing on everything. I like seeing Arabs debating things and discussing things here. For example, we do not agree, and it's called suddenly debate and democracy. Sometimes this agreement is good. Sometimes this agreement is bad. Now. But well, well, the point about, she's making is they're being paid to do yeah. more than debate in the Arab well, League. They're, uh, paid, they're paid well, to come up with some kinds is, of decisions. Isn't well, that the right? question is yeah, in that that's case. Right. The question in that case is whether this organization is an efficient organization. Is it run by voting, etc.? I think usually interstate organizations like these who don't have power to impose their will don't like to vote things. They like to agree on things by consent, what we call consensus because they cannot empower, no, you can't have a majority to impose things, to dictate things. They don't have an army like the Security Council sometimes now have. Now they have to agree on things, that's why they have to debate. The problem is not the fact that you disagree or you debate. The question is the people there, the kind of the regimes, their ideas, their thinking, what they want to make the Arab League of tool for themselves to impose their will. Yes, this is a problem okay. that are, needs are to you, be changed. Are you happy with that kind of answer? No. No, because he says that we should empower the people in the Arab League, and no, so how do you Arab suggest League, we, we the, empower them? No, you have to change, uh, you know, we can't be lazy about democracy. Expecting the United States bringing it, us to buy ships and changing the Arab League instead of changing our regime. I think there is a kind of laziness and of democratic forces in the Arab world who want democracy for them being served, sometimes by ships, sometimes by changing the Arab League. Democratic okay. forces have to make democratic actions in their okay. countries and All not right. complain about the Arab League. All right, Shafiq Gabra, you want to make a point um, here? You know, I mean, I think it is very important that the Arab League knows, and it's not about the Arab states now, no. the Arab League knows that we would want to dismantle it, that we are not happy. Oh, that well, it does not so represent us. So this motion is tactical. And that, okay. and that the Arab League needs to know. Because, you see, short of that, the Arab world will only move from one defeat to the other and from one stagnation Tim, to the other. Tim, you understand and, now. And, no, the motion is to strengthen the Arab League. They want the Arab League no, no, no. to Admin, understand this so to improve. Yeah, okay, I fine. Think, that's okay, fine. Could, he, could, he, could he just yes, finish the and then we're going to move to another question. The Arab League should know that we want to dismantle it and it is better dismantle itself because it is irrelevant. However, however, yeah, yeah. one last point, one last point. Yeah. Let this me say, it. before you give this me is it. Yeah, the dangerous finger, please, Hisham, Hisham, you, you, this is the type of the Arab League that we have. It always intercepts others when they speak. No, Hisham, let me speak. <laughs> yeah, this is the type. This is exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and not only that, I mean... I want to ask you a question. But you're okay, Egyptian diplomat, you know, you should not finish. do that. No, and yeah. then, and you then have we have been move. infected by the Arab League. And, please, and please, then, please. It's a please. question. He has 10 and more this is seconds. One problem I have. He has 10 more seconds. Now, the second problem, the it's second problem I have. The second problem, please, hear my second problem. Is Azmi, I have a problem with your thinking. Okay. Well, and I'll tell you where. You're not the only one. I'll <laughs> tell you where. I'll tell you where, Azmi. <laughs> you, you said, you said, I'm quoting you. You feel suspicious with uh, people. Skeptic. You see, you're suspicious with Skeptic. the other point of view, and that's another problem for the Arab world and the Arab League as well. All right, okay, we're going up to a gentleman at the back. You, sir. You want to dispel well, anything suspicious in this world? Thank you, we're moving on. <laughs> gentleman at the back, can we get a microphone to you, please? My question was like, why do we keep this league? It shows failure, it shows weakness. Why yes. should I be proud that such league represents me when others interfere in my proud. country, in my uh, states, or why is there no trust between the Arab states? I'm they have conflicts. We sh if the Arab League can't solve the conflicts, how can we face the world? Our reputation is spoiled for the other people or in the Western countries. We have to fix this, and the Arab League is like 
you know, sleeping are, to this are, case. You are talking with somebody who is not represented in the Arab League and certainly not proud of the Arab League. But you still now, want to keep it. The motion was not whether we should be proud about the Arab League or we should not be proud about that. But Just you want to keep it. And he says, why do you want to keep it? You're voting for that motion. Yeah, I well, yes, exactly. But keeping the Arab League, as I said, it's the only organization which is there. Having the Arab states together reminding us of the fact that there is something in common between Arabs, not only in language and in culture, but also in the political dream All and right. in yearning for some better Sh life in the future and coordinating the minimum. Shafiq Gabra, Shafi Gabra is going to come in here. Part of dismantling Arab been, identity. Shafiq Gabra has been very patient, yes. unusually. It's, it's, it is the issue. Commonality of Arabs in the Arab League, lack of teamwork, dispute, lack of agreement, lack of efficiency, lack of ability to solve any serious problem in the Arab world. So, you see, when the question from the gentleman over there was, was very clear on, on the Arab League, if you compare with Europe, luckily, luckily, Europe didn't have the Arab League. <laughs> luckily, what Europe had was an organization that is for steel, for economics, for, for economic activity. Economics came first, jobs, education, no. development, human integration, no, and that's how Europe has slowly two Europe wars. evolved. Europe had two world wars, very destructive. The Holocaust was in Europe. We Extreme had nationalism wars, was many, in Europe. Many, many what wars. you had after that is, Arab, is democratic regimes who formed the unity. Democratic regimes, you don't have, you did not have first the European unity and then democracy. You had democratic regimes who formed European unity. That's what you had. But you don't have an Arab League in Europe. I, it's too much. I mean, okay, he's let going. Him, let him come back. I mean, so let the Europeans back. are okay yes. because they're not Arabs, is it? What is this? Can you come back what on that, please? Please. I mean, we should be yeah. now embarrassed no, about please. our identity. No, is it racism? Really, what is we it? We really exactly? do need to hear from the other side. Thank you. In a way, if, if I hear you well, Azmi, yeah. what you are saying, we're going to go through hell and through many wars before no. we really start we to see the hope. And no. I believe there is a dream in the Arab world that can happen in democracy and development. And it can happen very soon. We should have democracy. And this is the time for change. Okay, gentlemen. And that's part of it. Gentlemen in the second that row. That is part of it. Gentlemen in the second row. Thank you very much. Mr. Hisham, um, with regards to you, you talk about. Um, success stories economically with the Arab, uh, w between the Arab states. But on the other hand, all of us over here, I think, do agree that politic uh, with regards to political issues, the Arab League has failed miserably. What do you plan on doing, being, being, um, being a, an active member in the Arab League or being the head of um, Mr. Amr Musa's office? Let me maybe take uh, a minute and talk about the four or five main issues that we are facing in the Arab world. Let me start by the Arab-Israeli conflict and the situation in Palestine. As a result of the elections, the United States, the European Union, decided not to assist the Palestinian Authority. We decided otherwise. And we decided that we will support the Palestinian Authority, and we are helping the Palestinian Authority, and we're trying to transfer money to the Palestinian Authority. We have been receiving phone calls every single day. They haven't received their, their salaries until this very day. So we're working on it, and we will transfer assistance to the Palestinian people. In the last five years, the Arab League transferred $1.5 billion to the Palestinian people. It may not be enough, because the suffering is much greater than that. But this is what we were able to do. In relation to Iraq, we have been working on the conference for accord and reconciliation. The preparatory meeting was held in Cairo. Uh, the conference itself is supposed to take place in Iraq. We were waiting for the formation of the government. We still are waiting. There has been some progress, and we hope that in the very near future, this uh, government would be in place, and we would be able to continue our efforts in order to achieve uh, reconciliation. Okay, let me come back to the question. Are you impressed with what you've heard? No, not. I mean, conferences, meetings have been going on for the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and nothing comes out of it genuinely. I mean, when Mr. Uh, sorry, I forgot the name. Uh, when, 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 Gabra. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gabra was talking about uh, the traveling between the, uh, the GC states with the, with the ID. 
this took us almost 20 years to come at, and we're talking about six states. We talk the same language. We are brothers, cousins. Uh, we, t we, we have the same culture, the same traditions. Six states took them 20 years to come up with a single ID card and have normal borders, except for Saudi, that we still cannot go through with, with, with this card. So what do you expect for 22 countries to come in and get one single issue that is anything that to help us as citizens of the Arab nation? to help us commute, to help us, something politically that puts us together and unites us as one country. We don't see this evident today. Yeah. I don't think he was impressed. <laughs> well, Tim, he asked on two things that do not coincide. He asked about the political issues, which, which as far as I'm concerned, are the Arab-Israeli conflict, the situation in Iraq, uh, situation in Darfur, the situation between Syria and Lebanon, and so on. And this is what I was trying to respond to. But then in the second half of his intervention, he talked about movement of people and things that are of a different nature. Now, I know people are sick of conferences. When I talk about a conference for reconciliation and accord in Iraq, this is not just a conference where governments are invited to make speeches. No, these are people who were unable to sit together around the same table for years and years and years. And the Arab League has succeeded in bringing them together around the same table to talk to each other. And as far as I'm concerned, this was a major breakthrough. And it was considered a major breakthrough by the Iraqis themselves, not by us, not by uh, those who are participating only, but by the whole world as well. They thought that this was a re real achievement. OK, gentlemen at the back, you've had your hand up for a long time. Thank you very much. I think uh, for the people uh, for against the motion, you've been talking so much about successes in the in the Arab League, uh, and you just mentioned about uh, physicians and doctors. I just happened to be a medical doctor, and I was the president of the Pan Arab Union Against Cancer, and I had to walk away from it after three months. Two meetings in Cairo. Everybody is fighting. It was purely political. We did not achieve anything. Every time we go for a meeting, the Jordanian doesn't want to speak to the Syrian, the Syrian doesn't want the Saudi, the Saudi doesn't want the Qatari, and it just went on like this with a representative from the Arab League that did not achieve anything. Excellent point. So now, <laughs> absolutely. But and the is, answer is? No, no. The, I, you see, I I'm not here to provide. Can I say the answer? No, 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 no. But we have to be serious. I'm not here to provide all the answers. What this point is very, you know, telling of the situation. This is not the problem of the Arab League. This is a problem of a number of Arab governments that came and differed and did not implement what, what they agreed on. Then you come and blame the Arab League. We came, the Arab countries, and nothing happened. Were we supposed to take the steps or were Arab governments supposed to take the steps? You tell me. Well, if we cannot achieve a simple thing when it comes to health care. Who is we? The Arab League. No. I mean, why do no, we meet? Why do we meet? It is why not do we meet, why do we meet under the umbrella? No. Oh, please, please, let, let, let me speak. finish. Please why do speak. I have to meet under the umbrella of the Arab League where I can take my own decisions? Uh, exactly. Meet under whatever so, umbrella you wish. But I provide an so umbrella. So every time we no, are no, called, no. We, are, we, are, we are working uh, uh, alone. We are not working under, under the Arab League or even the GCC. Believe me, I'm not happy with the GCC. It took us, as, as our colleague here have said, 20 years just to, to, to travel with, with, with an ID. So it will take us another 100 years to, to have economic borders being taken away. And, and All right, thank, thank you. you very Gen much. Gentlemen <laughs> in, the, in the, that, the row at the back, yeah. The poor position of the organization is a reflection of the poor position of its members. Now, if I'm ugly, and let's hope I'm not, <laughs> I look at myself in the mirror, I will only see the uh, reflected image of my ugly self. And what should I do about it? I don't know, get a nose job, perhaps, or lose weight, but certainly not break the mirror. This is nonsense. And uh, this is the case. The, uh, uh, another question to Mr. Gabra. Doesn't he think that disbanding the League in this critical time of history is just like committing suicide and hand over the great legacy of the Arab nation into, the, into a horrible power, the power of terrorism, who are already prevailing in our societies, who only use religion to implement their dark age agenda. And finally, having 
an organization of no political value, or let me rephrase it, having an organization of political incapacity does not necessarily require its cancellation, or else why would the British have kept the royal establishment for? All right, Shafiq, yeah, thank you. Quick answer. Excellent. Uh, you see, it's a strong example, though you have the right intention. <clears throat> let, me, let me clarify. You're standing in a house, the umbrella he's talking about. It is full of holes. All the rain is coming at you. The umbrella isn't working. For God's sake, wouldn't you change the umbrella? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the point in the proceedings where we're going to vote on the motion that this House believes it is time for the Arab League to disband. Would you please take the voting machines? If you want to vote for the motion, press button one, the yellow button. If you want to vote against, it's button two, the red button. Would you do that now, please? Your vote will be transmitted automatically to our computers and we'll get the result very shortly. And there we have it. 60. 60.5% for the motion, 395 against. The motion has been resoundingly carried. Thank you very much indeed. So all it remains for me to do is to thank our distinguished panelists for coming here tonight. Thank you to our audience for being with us. The Doha debates will be back in a month's time. Please join us then. But for now, from all of us on the team, thank you very much for being here. Have a safe journey home. Good night. Thank you very much.